Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're doing another episode in our Legendary Kotep campaign. Let's go ahead and get back in here. Alright, so we took over this town last time. Probably just gonna go for... Stalkers... Microfaints... We don't have a lot of those yet, the Necrosphinxes and such, although this guy will have them. So we can hand them off to this guy. He's gonna have quite a few scorpions. Yeah. I think we want stone sentinels. Soul Reaper is very good. Go ahead and grab stone sentinels, though. Nehikara and Tomb Prince and Necrotect. Okay, so we only have one wizard. Which is okay. This guy has no wizard, but he's hiring two more scorpions. And we're maxed out on all of our big units. Okay. Order. We should be able to get up there to deal with that. We can go ahead and grab three night car warriors, yeah. And then Our Skaven friends are actually starting to cause a lot of problems. Public order, huh? Untainted. And the corruption's given us negative three. Now, the problem is, with, I can't go over there and siege that by myself. Because they're sieging it. I could pay them maybe to try to do peace. Okay, they are at war with Nagaron. That's why they're at war with them, is because Nagaron's confederated. I can't actually pay them. Pay them to join war, but I can't pay them to go to peace. Somebody. Okay. I mean, I don't 100% need this territory. It's not going to generate that much for me, because it's a bunch of ports, and ports are trash. Although, I mean, I do kind of want that, because that's... I do want it. It's going to be in a tier 4. Okay, so the question becomes then... Do I just hang around and wait on that, or... Do I head back south... I mean, there's nothing... He's going to sit there and wait probably 13 turns. He might take it. I can't sit here and wait, so I think what I can do then is start heading south with this army. And then I can have this guy or this guy, one of them, just come back through and sweep that up. If he ends up not getting it. If he gets it, we're just going to have to give him the territory, I think. I do want the tier 4, but it's more important that I don't go to war with him right now. He has only given me 580 something gold in trade.
They do have idle heads and wine up here, but all of this is yellow. And the highest these can be for them are tier 3. So I'm not going to be able to inherit any tier 4 towns if I go to war with them. I think just let them have it. They're pretty reliable, right? Ring ruin. Yeah. Dark blessings upon you. What gifts do you seek in Norska? Now, if he attacks another person, though, that's going to force me to... I don't think that's necessary. Ah, I guess we got to give it to him. Then I'll have somebody else come over and deal with that. Okay, so we need to get downhill, down here and help out our verminous friends. Start dealing with Marathi down south. So it's going to take us a while to run down there. We could do it via sea, but I'm really afraid of getting intercepted um, at sea. So I really don't want to move on water. Historically undead, not very strong on water. Let's double check and everything. Okay, so that's all good. We need to upgrade these things, but it's going to be a moment. Now, if we're going to get a rebellion, eventually we do need to sell these. Now, what do we want jar-wise? I know we want this guy. So that'll be one. That's what, 200 jars. Pay for that guy. I do want this, though. I do want another tomb prince. That's 300 jars that I need. I don't like the scorpion thing. But those aren't super necessary just yet. Okay, and then how long on the uh, Necrosphinx stuff? Top tier 5 things are still going to be a while. Okay, so that's all good. I don't want any jar stuff. I don't think so. From over here. This seemed okay, but I didn't really monitor it that closely, honestly. This ability recharge is actually, it's all right if you don't have anything else um, when you have arcane conduits and you can use it twice in a row along with like a core spell that you have. Archery Colts. I'm cool with him just sitting there. Now, let's see, so this army has one wizard. Okay, Treacherous is good. I'm gonna go ahead and hire another one. Let's go ahead and get this going. Um, wait, is that... Faction wide, they get those bonuses. Oh, I thought you had to hire it where um, Kotep was to get it. Okay. All right. Well, let's hire it. Um, this turn right here, then. I'm still not entirely sure which one I think is best. It's very situational, but I think if you're just going to have one caster, 
I think maybe Nehekara. Like, the defensive options are really nice. But the Shadows are really good if you're going to have multiple casters. Like, Shadows plus Nehekara are really good. We'll just, we'll go with that. This is for big cast, though. Like, their small stuff is just not that good. The penumbral... It's alright. Like, I like them for their big cast. They just don't have enough small cast. This is one of the issues. I feel like for late game... We need the Nehekara. Like, once we get a bunch of constructs. I think it's just more versatile. Yeah, let me go ahead and get rid of this and just get Nehekara. Like, I do like Shadows. If you already have a Nehekara. But... Let me look at light one more time. I'm just trying to think, like, when I have a ton of constructs, I really just want to protect them most likely. Yeah, no. Nehekara, the thing is, like, you can't cast all 15 magic spells all the time, right? So Shadows would be great if you could just spam Occam's Mind Razor and the... Um, the Vortex, but their cheap spells are pretty trash. Whereas, these two cheap spells are so good. 44% resistance and extra damage are both really nice. For their cost. And then you have some big stuff that's good. I haven't used this as much lately, but this will potentially be good late game. And then you do have a Vortex. It's not as good as the other one, but it is cheaper. So it'll still be good in Sieges. When I have a bunch of Tomb Guard infantry line, like an infantry line that's actually worth a flip, then uh, this will actually be pretty good. And then this is very nice for dealing with their large monstrous constructs. So I put that on some Ashapti Great Bows. So I think this just has better utility. And of course the passive heals your whole army, which is going to be particularly strong with Tomb Guard. So getting into kind of the Tomb Guard state of mind, I think think that's where we want to be. This is still pretty legit. I think that's pretty good, but it doesn't have any defense once again. So I think I'm just going to go with Nehekara. That's just, that's so strong. For its cost. Okay. <clears throat> what else? Necrotect. Okay. We're coming down to scout with this guy. So we want to bust up Marathi, probably. Grab Hexoidal in this area, if we can. Remember, we're trying to weave our way all the way down here to win. I'm not sure if we're going to go for the old world. I really want to. That's one of the main reasons I did this campaign rather than the normal one. I mean, maybe. We, maybe we can take one of our armies from here and like go over to Bretonia. I would like to fight the old world factions. I can't come up through Chaos Infested Lands. And I'm friends with uh, these guys, so... I think I'll just try to befriend the uh, Vikings and Okay. 
Okay, I think that'll be fine public order wise. Everything else is all good, I believe. I still. Okay, so um, sort of short-term goal is to get more Tomb Guard. Okay, so Malak gets back, it seems. So then I have a bigger infantry line. I have quite a few constructs right now. I just need a tougher infantry line. Maybe if they bust this up. I would like for them to take this so that I could take it. Excuse me. I would love to have those golden idols right there. Well, that's all they can make over there, so. I mean, those things are pretty frustrating to go against. Do I go for the War Sphinx or the Necro Sphinx? So the big problem late game when I'm trying to fight those constructs down south are going to be their large constructs. So I think that means I have to go Necro Sphinx. I do like the War Sphinx, and he's great against infantry, and we will definitely get him. But I feel like end game, especially against other Tomb Kings in that area... It's got to be the Necro Sphinx. So do I want to try to hold this down, or do I want to try to run north? Yeah, I think we'll go up there, and then we'll get rid of... Okay, so you need a Tomb Prince and a Necrotect over there. And that army. How many Necrotects? Okay, I only have one Necrotect here. Do I have, wait, is that two? Okay, I do have two Necrotects over there. Okay, so let's... Get this one guy out of here, and we can put him over here. 
start diversifying these armies a little better. all good. I would like to upgrade to get Stalkers and a Necropolis Knight, but it's going to take a little bit. Um, how much is this? 7,800. Don't I have... I don't have the discount guy over here yet. Oh, I didn't even realize the units that I got here. Okay. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and get rid of that. So I am about to get more Tomb Guard here. That's why it's costing so much, because it's an orange area. It's still worth, okay. Yeah, he's gonna siege them all the way out, probably. I still think they could come out there and beat him down. Yeah, I'm almost certain they could with that army. I could do it. Um, I mean, those Nagaron Guard are ridiculous, and the, his other units are Blackheart Corsairs. Those should mow down what this dude has. Well, he does have quite a few trolls against the Blackheart Corsairs. I mean, it would be a close fight. So tempted just to hop on the sea and go down there via sea. It's so much faster, but I'm just not risking losing all of this. I'm gonna have to get rid of this get a uh, public order building which also adds untainted which would be nice might have to pop in here for a turn just to get some public order and then continues out <clears throat> okay could upgrade this, but I'm going to wait and get <clears throat> get some bigger ticket units. Oops. I think everyone else has moved, right? Yeah. We are going to get a lord pretty soon. Jonia hates us because of our treaties with Argal. Once again, I could do treaties with the High Elves, but <clears throat> I kind of want to kill them also. Forgot to move him. Oh well, not a huge deal. Interesting.
Hmm, I could actually gain this province also, because now the uh, elves and those guys occupy it. Uh, 10 points of minus 400 gold, basically, or... So that's minus 4,000 gold, or I pay... Or I gain a ton of gold. Income from trade-producing buildings. They don't give any income. Uh, we're giving them jars. It's like several thousand gold swing. So it's like, will you pay one, basically, like, one and some change, one battle worth of, uh, canopic jars in exchange for, like, 5,000 gold? It's like, yes. It's like, if you win a battle and it said, here's 5,000 gold, would you take it? Yes. <laughs> Over, like, 40 jars. It's all good. Um... Like we're gonna need some public order in here, probably. Could build it there, probably don't wanna build it there. Okay, and we're about to get some more of those. Okay, I'm going to let them tear this stuff up so that I can go in and take it here in a minute. I can't tell if this place is still under siege or not, or if they're running home to deal with this. Dang it, where's my scouts? Now this territory is green. Nine thousand, Jesus. So, but that does give me more sepulchral stalkers. Is there anything else I can do for cash here? I mean, I could just kill Malekith right here again. I probably just need to kill him, because what happens if he, like, runs over here and just, like, tries to start backdooring me? That I'm pretty sure I can. I 
Now he might run. Really? They think a bunch of harpies are going to hack me up. Okay, he does have support from the um, Black Ark. I mean, those should be able to hack the Harpies up. Maybe, do I just not have a good way to kill Malekith? I mean, he is Halberd Infantry. Like, he can probably do pretty well against him. Oh, Shopti should murder all of this stuff. I will fight it. I don't know why it's giving them such high odds. I mean, maybe those Harpies are a lot better than I think. <clears throat> Every time I've used a unit like the Harpies, it hasn't been that successful, but who knows? I mean, they do get extra leadership and some extra stats on Legendary, so it's entirely possible that it's just really good when the AI has them. Alright, so we want to line the Tomb Prince up with uh, Malekith. This looks like a multiplayer battle. The enemy just has, like, all gyrocopters or something. Just some, like, super troll lineup. Are these halberd? Those are sword. Okay, so we don't have any more halberds. Birds are almost certainly going to go down here, but... Those, the Nagar Warriors do not have any shield, so. So those shades are going to light me up. I'm trying to get the best positioning that I can on this hill. Just let my people rest.
Guess I can have the bird soak. Just trying to get in their face so it'll skirmish. Holy crap. Yeah, guys, we gotta light that up. Why can't I click on him? Yeah, this is where I could really use some chariot type of stuff. Is he running? No, that's the bats. Go, 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 go. Okay, let's go. Yeah, we're just gonna have to chase him down. Where is he? Everybody, just get this dude. What?
Boys, what are we doing? Fight him. What are you guys doing? Hello, fight. I don't. What? I don't understand. Like, does right click not work? Is my right click disabled? Shit, get out of there. Like, why can't units respond to movement commands? I'm, I'm confused. Like, I told him to run out of there 50 years ago. I told them to attack Malekith a long time ago. Damn it, I'm pretty sure that was my high-level guy, so I'll get him back in 10 turns. But, man, that's frustrating. They're all just, like, sitting there like, hmm, big fight going on here. You know? They don't have the guard mode. Sometimes if they're in guard mode, they won't fight if you click on them. I told that uh, guy to run out of there. He didn't run. That's one really frustrating thing for multiplayer. It's just like the the rules for collision and the rules for like unit mass and escapes and things like that just seem really inconsistent a lot of times. And especially in multiplayer where people are constantly trying to um, isolate and pick off your lords and your heroes and stuff like that. It's... It's frustrating. I'm pretty sure that's my immortal caster, though, so it shouldn't be a huge deal. Obviously, it's still annoying to lose him, though. I shouldn't have had him over there fighting them, I guess, but I needed to tie him up so they stopped firing on me. I mean, that was an annoying army to go against. Now I could have killed a ton. This guy, like, I tried to put him on Malekith the whole time. And he was just, like, chilling. Victory in undeath. Slaves, inform the Necrotect. You're gonna make me fight it again? Come on, dude. Man, I was hoping it'd just be an auto. No, I don't have magic this time, which is gonna make this a bit harder, but. Now, does that resurrect... I don't remember if this resurrects dead units or not. Oh, I'm thinking probably not, so I need to wait till they take some injuries. If it was a single entity unit, you could cast it on it at the beginning. He's going to make me march up this whole thing here. I had a really good 
fight in the Dark Elf campaign on this map against Norska. I had this position up here. Pretty sure it's this map. Yeah, because they started way over here. It's pretty epic, 20 on 60. You want to check that out? It was a lot of fun. It was a really hard fight. I had pretty low tier stuff. Now they're going to get to fight on me as I run up this hill, which is annoying. When you're fighting uphill, I don't know the exact stats, but I remember that you lose like melee attack and defense and you get tired a lot easier. Like you get a lot of debuffs, so you always want to try to level out the uh, hill advantage or disadvantage. And that's another problem in multiplayer is sometimes like you might draw a map where you're at the very top of a hill. I remember a couple of maps specifically in multiplayer where you're at the very top of a hill and they're at the very bottom of a hill. And there's like no possible strategic advantage to the bottom of a hill. So, you know, you're just straight up at a disadvantage in that fight compared to other people. Now over the course of like hundreds of games that does equal out, you know, but it's definitely a balance problem. Who's taking all this, these guys? Oh, no, 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 no. Get over there. Do not let them fire. I'll just chase them to the end of the earth here. It's fine. Now, I do have... One of these guys is a halberd infantry, so he should be able to tear... Malekith up here. Oh, Nehekara. Okay. Just calling it Nehekara. For real? I mean, Malekith is dead. How are they not, like... What is their leadership on Legendary? I mean, your Legendary Lord is dead. This is... Are these guys unbreakable? I mean... These guys still are not running yet. They're facing a shop T. Their legendary lord is dead. And they're like, nah, we're good. Like 99% of them are dead. Okay, they're finally running.
All right, good stuff. <clears throat> Victory and undeath unleash the slaves. End their existence. Let the living live. And at this point, I'll take the jars. Are you kidding me? Everybody's dead. How is that army not wiped out? I mean, whatever. I'm not chasing them that far. We're going to take a lot of attrition. These guys could, in theory, turn on us and try to kill us next turn. I don't understand. Like, I killed them twice, and all they have left are, like, you know, a third of one battalion. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to wipe out the whole unit. It's good. Okay. Yeah, we have to choose one of these. All right, so do we want... 15 magic. Casualty replenishment and local recruitment are both very good. The shop tea is very good. Mm, leadership and defense for Tomb Guard are both really good. Now, how much in the way of a shop team am I going to have in this army? I do have a decent amount right now. But as my, I get more and more armies, we're about to get another army. I'm probably going to have to divide those up a little bit more. It's where we might have like four Ushapti per army, something like that. And then I want like seven Toon Guard. Her army, probably. Casket of Souls is worthless. So basically, do I want 15% replenishment and local recruitment? I don't think local recruitment's a huge deal. It's nice. That is okay, but probably not worth. So it comes down to do I want Ushapti or do I want Tomb Guard? Tomb Guard are nice, but those aren't really my killers. It is going to be harder and harder to get Ushapti in a lot of places, because it's really only going to be worth if we can get to Tier 4. Like, just getting one Ushapti at Tier 3 at this point, because we have so many, is probably not worth. So we're going to have to have Tier 4 towns. On the flip side, we can have a lot of Tomb Guard. Um, because... That only requires a tier 3, and you get 3 Tomb Guard at tier 3. And having that extra leadership and defense is pretty good. I mean, the 5-5 five, five is good, but... <clears throat> so we can realistically have probably 7 Tomb Guard just to make our front line infantry in every army, because we get 3 at tier 3. Uh, what are their stats here? Now, leadership is not amazing. It's okay on them, because they already have decent leadership. Um, what rank is he? He's only rank 2. Um, melee defense would be very nice, because that's what I want them to do. I just want them to hold the line. The Ashopti are obviously really awesome. Five extra melee attack is very good on them. But, once again, I think... You know, once I start getting up to five or six armies, you know, we're only going to be able to field, like, four of these if we're trying to have, you know, reasonable armies. With the exception of, um, you know, probably my core army here is going to have 
Even then, though, right now, I only have four in that army. So I think it's much more likely that I'm going to have more Tomb Guard than a Shop D. And I'm almost... I might be the person who recruits him, but... I'm leaning towards this. And the recruit rank. It's pretty nice faction-wide. So if I get, like, five people that have this, then we can start recruiting the Tomb Princes at, like, level 11. The last few that we get, which would be handy. Go for that. Um, Grab that. We gotta wait on our uh, Necrotect, I think. Yeah, we gotta wait on our Necrotect to get in there. Now, that's actually gonna kind of suck if they siege us right away because we're not gonna be have replenishment. But the um, we're only gonna suffer negative ten very briefly for occupying. I'm 18 gold short, for real. I do want the 10% off on this guy, though. Okay. So we're going to have to wait a second there. That's fine. This is actually going to be a problem. I mean, I'm wondering if we can dash over here. I think to be on the safe side, and this sucks, but I think I've got to get rid of that tax for one turn to make sure I don't get that public order problem. And we'll have to fix it next turn. Because I chased him, but I think it was important to wound Malekith. Okay, I think the rest of this is fine. Go ahead and upgrade that if I want to, but I'd probably rather just wait 
upgrade this one. Even though it costs more because it's already tier 2, it's going to be worth, I think, make that happen. Okay, so that's going to be it for this episode, I think. Just double checking everything. Everybody's moved. Oh, I forgot to move this, dude, but that's fine. Rise downstairs. We're going back down in a second. You show up to change your clothes. And okay. I can get ready before we go. When are you done with that? Uh, pretty much right now. I don't know, they wounded Neck protect. Yeah, we gotta try to kill them off as soon as we can. So these heroes quit spamming stuff on me. I'm glad they can't outright, like, completely kill your unit now. I don't know if they ever could in Warhammer. I think they could in the first one, but that was really annoying in Attila. You just have one of your, like, awesome wards just completely assassinated, like, removed from the game. Of course, they could die off of natural causes. Like, that was a much more um, chaotic game. The fates have surely selected you for greatness. Thanks to my guidance, your tremendous power grows as if driven by some divine power. Your enemies tremble before them. Okay, well that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.